Welcome to this first public session in How To. Welcome to Berlinale Talents 2019. It's uh, really a pleasure for us this uh, afternoon also to have former participants of Berlinale Talents back in our program, now as experts or really initiators of uh, future programs in and about Africa. Um, it's a great pleasure also for us that uh, this uh, panel is supported by the Federal Foreign Office. Um, we have a long relationship uh, with the German Federal Foreign Office. Together they supported 10 years uh, the Talents Durban uh, project and uh, also hosting now the Africa Hub at the European Film Market and the uh, Federal Foreign Office is also uh, a member and the founding partner of uh, the World Cinema Fund. So um, it's also uh, very important for us um, to increase also the partnerships with other uh, potential partners uh, worldwide. Also the Robert Bosch Stiftung is now uh, uh, back with a new focus for uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, it's called a Project Generation Africa. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome here Irmgard Fellner, uh, the Director for Cultural Policy from the German Federal Foreign Office this afternoon here. <laughs> and also please welcome Dorothee Wenner, um, moderator of this afternoon and a uh, long companion also in all issues about Africa, a uh, long companion also with the Berlinale. She's uh, our delegate for Africa. So please welcome uh, Dorothy Werner here. Um, Dorothy will introduce you to the panel lists here after. Uh, you have now the floor here for a little speech. Thank you. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm really pleased to see that we have full house um, in spite of the rain, uh, that's heroic, uh, but it also shows um, how important um, this meeting is. Um, I'm Irmgard Maria Fellner, uh, Director for Cultural Policy at the Federal Foreign Office, and it's a great pleasure for me to welcome you on behalf of the Federal Foreign Office, who has, as we heard, has been a supporter um, of Berlinale Talents uh, almost from the beginning, and um, it's for us uh, one of the main focuses. Um, we um, are very happy to be your partners, um, and um, I will not bore you for a long time, but I would like to speak on behalf of the Foreign Ministry. Since its launching in 2003, Berlinale Talents has had a great global impact on emerging filmmakers, as an incredible number of almost 8,000 talents have passed its door. Undeniably, Berlinale Talents is one of the pillars of Berlinale, and an incredibly alumni network. Worldwide, as new shots of the initiative has been sprouting in Beirut, Buenos Aires, Guadalajara, Durban, Sarajevo, and Tokyo. We all at the Federal Foreign Office are happy to have accompanied the initiative from the beginning. We both share the belief in fostering cultural diversity, cross-cultural exchange, and open dialogue thus creating a solid foundation for international understanding and cooperation. Our take on film in Africa is, as part of the creative industries, film has an enormous growth potential and is important from an economic perspective. Strengthening African film will help strengthen 
African economies, culture, and sense of community. Creative industries contribute to social cohesion and empowerment. Now, more than ever, as societies struggle for individual and collective identities, we must invest in and support creative industries as a way for people to retain a means to be themselves and to express their views, identities and feelings in a constructive and accessible way. It is my firm belief that the field of creative industries brings people and societies closer together. In times where governments around the world are increase, increasingly becoming self-centered and inward-looking, it is of utmost importance to counterbalance, to foster dialogue and openness. The current German federal government has pledged in its coalition agreement to increase cultural exchange and cooperation with African countries on an equal footing not as a colonial way of doing it. Therefore, we are confident to continue our activities in this sector in the years to come. What does the Foreign Office already do today? At the heart of our activities in the field of creative industries in Africa is our film initiative for Africa, which we started in 2016. In cooperation with our German Cultural Institute abroad, the Goethe Institute, we commissioned a study on the film market in various African countries. In this study, it was emphasized that the potential of film in Africa isn't just an untapped consumer market, but a major film producer, and thus a driver for economic growth, social cohesion, and cultural diversity in Africa and the rest of the world. However, the three interlinked challenges of effective distribution, business skills, and access to finance need to be addressed. We launched a network of educators in the film industry, connecting professionals within Africa and in Germany, and supported a summer school in Germany about African storytelling. We also increased our support for African productions and co-productions in the framework of the World Cinema Fund here at Berlinale, so that more African stories and content can be experienced by audiences worldwide. And the Berlinale Africa Hub, which we are funding as well, is the meeting point and center of Africa-related activities at Berlinale. The program for the 250 participants from 77 countries leaves a lot to expect for the days ahead. It will be interesting to see how you implement this year's motto, how to fail better. Thank you all for being here, for putting this initiative to use and sharing your visions and passion for good cinema. I'm looking forward to the following discussion to gain deeper insights into the work of Berlinale filmmakers and artists from Lesotho, South Africa and Spain. Let me conclude by wishing you exciting moments, new experiences, unexpected conclusions, and hundreds of opportunities to meet many wonderful people. And I had the opportunity to meet a, a young filmmaker from South Africa just before uh, entering um, the stage. And she was telling me how important um, coming to Berlinale talent was for her. Actually, she said, everybody needs someone to be a first believer in him or her. And we want to be the first believers in your talent. So all the best to everyone. Elna, this was really an insightful kickoff into the next round of discussion. It is my great pleasure now to ask on stage the panelists. Who comes first? They all sit there, hiding. <clears throat> Perivi Kachavivi, please. Uh, this is mine. Oh, Lemuang Jeremiah Musese. <laughs> Neo Spalusch. <laughs> and Tiny Mungwe. <laughs> so
So I was just asked to say something, and in case I forget, I will say this first, so to get it off my chest. This is a very important lady, so she has to leave <laughs> five, three, 15. Don't think uh, she's running off because she's not interested. Please excuse her in advance for an early leave. Um, continental drift, new views on Africa is the subject matter. And indeed, this year at the Berlin Film Festival, we have a huge amount of films that not only come from uh, African countries, but also other films that were made in collaboration with African individuals, actors, production houses, that reflect on what is going on in Africa. In all sections, by the way, and there's a lot to discover when you cruise our program, for instance, Tonight we have uh, an event at the Forum in the Silent Green Quarter on how are images of Africa constructed. So in the widest range from Africa Hub to co-production market to this very panel, we feel there is this momentum. Something is different from, let's say, three years ago. And I particularly want to mention the summer of 2015, when this country really changed. And I think when it comes to looking at the film uh, life and the film world we are living in, it has changed definitely for the better. There is so much more interest, so much more going on when it comes to looking of how we can stretch out, how we can find new ways of collaborating. And the panelists who we have invited do have something to say about it. So uh, it is our ambition with this session to do something for which I want to quote from one of the films that I will talk about a little later in more detail. And that is the film festival film in which um, a South African filmmaker who is talking in the film says to the question being asked, what is an African film? His reply, that's a bullshit question. So I hope that with this uh, panel, we get beyond where we got stuck in many conferences on African cinema, and we move a little bit ahead and sharing experiences that you all have made in the process of making the films. And the setup of the whole thing is like that in order for you to know who these people are, what they've done, also doing a little bit of promotion in case the films are still running so that you buy tickets or get tickets to see the films that are doing. Uh, I will do a bit of uh, an introduction with a short clip of the films that they have made. And afterwards, we have a debate for which I will already now invite you to interact and say, stop, I have a better idea, intervene so that we don't have like this, now we open up for the floor, but have all of you engaged in this debate from the beginning after the round of introduction. I stay, start with uh, Jeremiah. He has made the film with, I think, the longest title in the festival. It's Mother, I'm Suffocating, this is my last film about you. Um, Jeremiah is a self-taught filmmaker. He has an extremely interesting biography, uh, worthwhile a novel or a film in itself, a biopic. Maybe somebody's looking for a character you might want to talk to, uh, this person. He has made two short films that played big and had like quite a tremendous success in the international film festival circuit. And he's now uh, doing um, the world premiere of this film, a long film, which is called uh, this long title, Mother, I'm Suffocating, this is my last film about you. It's a film that doesn't fit into any genre. It's a black and white film in which uh, Jeremiah is using experimental means to talk about something that is so difficult to talk about that I myself must say I was completely speechless when I saw the film for the first time. Because it's really hard to address how do I relate to my native land where I'm not welcome anymore and especially not welcome as a filmmaker. So he was trying to find a way of talking about this 
not in a simple documentary style, but in a style that is using artistic elements, experimental elements, and uh, ways of trying to express this difficult journey, in this case from Lesotho to Berlin. We are now very happy, by the way, that he's our neighbor. I would like to ask the first scene to be seen from the film that Jeremiah has presented here as the festival, as the world premiere. Jeremiah, I would like you to give us a little bit of background of how you developed the structure of the film. So the mother in this film is the mother as his mother, but it's also the motherland. And she is addressed, but we are the recipients of a letter. So if you would explain the structure and how you developed it. Um, I think since I wanted to talk about particularly about uh, my country. So I decided to use a storyline of my mother because they're pretty much parallel in the way of the, the evolution, how they sort of changed. And it was very easy to gravitate towards telling the story of mother because it's more personal and I'm seen as an individual. Because, I mean, I am collective because I'm an African filmmaker. So it's very hard to sort of even talk about Africa and address certain issues because you are seen as a collective. And the only way to speak things that I, I, I speak about or I address in this film was to do it as, make it as more, almost personal film about my mother while I'm addressing my country at the same time or the state of African state, if there is one, if there is a state. Um, so the structure, because well, what, I, what I wanted to do, I didn't want to make a classical narrative, because it's very hard, like I said, I'm dealing with a black nation and addressing certain issues that see things beneath. And it's so hard to, as an African, because I'm expected to, to sort of protect it in a way, and the only best way I could do is to sort of make it sort of symbolic, rather than the actual, um, the actual classical narrative. So, and also the structure always come like later on in terms of how um, it always depends on the story, it always depends on the on the on the uh, on the cinematography. Um, as far as the style, and then I decide later as far as the structure how it's going to be. Even the idea of making an essay, it just happened by default. Because at that moment when I was doing it, I had this urge and this desperation. And because I had like a lot of troubles like in African continent, so I was a bit frustrated. And I felt like, let me just do it symbolically and just leash out and just vomit whatever it is that I have and that is seething beneath me. So that's how the, the, the structure and the film came about. Neos Balush is a producer and filmmaker based in Barcelona in Spain. It's uh, the second time she's in the Berlinale with a film. The first time was with La Plaga at the International Forum. This year she's coming with a film which is called Staff Only. You all know these signs in hotels and everywhere. So this is very much an important borderline the film defines. Staff only um, is around a young woman called Marta. She's 17 years old, with birthday turning 18 in the film. And she is on kind of a forced vacation, if I may say so, with her little brother and the father, who is very active in tourism especially in African countries. So I think it was a cheap gift of his to his beloved daughter with who they don't live together. So the three of them embark on a group journey to Senegal where the film is set. Marta is crossing the border of where she's not supposed to go as a white tourist. And I think we show the clip first, and then I ask you a question. Staff only, please. 
Nish, my question to you would be that uh, I think in events like this, we very often started and ended, and I would think majority would agree, that we in 2019 have reached uh, the time when it's a clear understanding between everyone. It's time that African filmmakers tell the story of Africa. Now, you uh, found a way of positioning yourself as a white filmmaker still shooting in Senegal by using a lot of different layers. And I would like you to um, share with us how you found your position as a white filmmaker going to Senegal and making a film that is maybe very much about image production. Please elaborate. Um, well, it was not clear at the very beginning. I, I traveled a lot when I was young, everywhere, and I never found the way to make a film about people that I met. And uh, it was, I think it was 13, 14 years ago, I went for the very first time to Senegal, and I went to this specific area where there's a lot of tourism. And I found out there was this specific way of relating between tourists and, and Senegalese people, workers mainly, uh, where I had something to say about it because uh, I saw that I could clearly take the point of view of a tourist, which is assuming that I will always be a tourist there, a white person. So taking her point of view and going till the end with that point of view, not even changing about that. And even have you said, have you seen there the moments where people speaking Wolof, they are not even translated in the film. They are not subtitled because we are in the skin of Marta and that's exactly my position. You wanted to say something? Okay. Um, I'm coming to the third film we are briefly introducing to embark uh, on getting further into details of how you all have found your approach. Um, maybe I add this little thing that uh, Niosh was smart enough to have like very many layers of also using different material and that is uh, there is a fling or a love relationship if, if I may say so between a guy who produces video and Marta so it's the film in a film in a film and it's an extremely smart way of looking of how image production between a European family and uh, in an African environment is depicted. Maybe in this I, may, film. I may add, yes. yes. You've seen there is a point of view of the filmmaker uh, who is producing these videos, but of course he's trying to reproduce yeah. what the tourists are expecting from him, which is the view of Africa that tourists are willing to buy as a souvenir after they leave the country. So he's he's not showing his own perspective there. He's trying to reproduce, so we can talk about how the touristic experience is absolutely constructed and built. This is a very nice bridge, thank you, to come to a film festival film, <laughs> which is a film that uh, when we saw it the other day at a festival is a really weird experience because you feel uh, where we are, like in an environment like here, is part of what the story is. So the connection you make between yourself and what's on screen is wow. Uh, before I ask Perivi a question, it is my great pleasure to introduce the co-director, Pumilio Kata. Please stand up so we all see you. The, co the two of them co-directed. And also, please welcome Anna Thiemann, who is the producer of the film. So, um, a film festival film is a film that was shot in a couple of days only uh, during the Durban Film Festival, with a few minutes also at the Berlin Film Festival two, three years ago. Yes, in the, in the beginning. And um, the film very much uh, is about the subject that we are addressing here. 
who is in charge of what next African film is made? What are the dynamics behind? What do we do at uh, time out zones that we enjoy at the festival and everyone is, hey, we are, you know, having a good time. So what the two of them try to achieve is a mixture of documentation, but also bringing real character and real, um, um, uh, real situations into a film that speaks up and says, well, it's time for all of us to talk about how can we find a better way, uh, a more constructive way of how African filmmakers will have access to means to decision-making um, juries and uh, to also spaces maybe that would allow new ways of storytelling. So before asking the question again, I think it might be interesting to see a scene. Uh, so can we have the clip from Film Festival Film? That's a good picture. Perivi, uh, tell us a little bit about this film, which is absolutely not a straightforward documentary, but it's a film by which you have a certain understanding of what you want to show, what you want to depict, but also what you want to achieve with the film. Thank you. Um, I think um, we were very much sort of just responding to experiences that I think a lot of filmmakers and a lot of people probably in this room that can relate to, uh, is that we hadn't seen a film speak to that experience and speak to what is it like to be a filmmaker, to be an African filmmaker, certainly, but I think a lot of us can relate to that, to a lot of, uh, to a lot of that experience that we just saw, you know, that pitch experience, that feeling uh, very much of being sort of isolated and trying to work your way into an industry that is very competitive and very hard to, to access, right? and even more so coming from where we come from. And uh, I think also just being tired of the fact that a lot of African films are always about external factors and external elements. And we have people responding to trauma, to war, to violence, to these sort of great uh, struggles, if you will, but we're often very uninterested in the psychology of people and the interiors of people, so it was also I think a, a work that wanted to speak to that a little bit. And um, in terms of the form, we just had this idea, I think, of in a kind of poem, both me and Mpumalelo coming, well, we, we met and were quite clear that we both wanted to make a film like this. And then I think the sort of two strands, if you will, were following her and being in her head as she navigates the festival. So we see that. And then this other idea of wanting to interview and engage with the, the, the who's who, so to speak, and some of the very notable filmmakers that were at the festival, and then trying to sort of blend those two forms together, uh, which made a kind of this sort of docu, docu-fiction uh, hybrid of a film, kind of, yeah. There is this nice new word that you've phrased for the film. The Wakanda fication. Do you want Which to one? say something about that? It's a film against Wakanda fication. Anyone uh, doesn't know what that okay. is? <laughs> Can you explain that a I little bit? To, yeah. Okay. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah. The idea of Wakanda fication. The idea of the only way we get to experience ourselves is through this sort of neatly or not so neatly packaged. Uh, mega film, which I think it's unrealistic for that to speak to the breadth and complexity of the African experience and to the fact that it can only be made in such a centralized way through Disney or through an American studio, just that there are other worlds, there are other ways, there are other shades um, beyond that sort of heavy machinery, so to speak. Um, I think my co-director will add a little bit more later on Wakandification, <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> so, brings me to Generation Africa. This is a project uh, for which Tiny Mungu we've already welcomed. I want to take the opportunity to also welcoming Don Atkins. Please get up one. In case anyone doesn't know this man, you better run after him. 
He has been a long-term associate with talents, with a lot of initiatives. And the reason why we are very happy to have Tiny with us is not only because she is a colleague, uh, she is amazing, yeah, no, but uh, we've been working in talents together in various projects. She has been associated with the Durban Film Festival for longest time. And now Generation Africa, and this is also why I'm asking my question to you last, is because you, with Generation Africa, I think have tried to incorporate a lot of experiences and coming to our motto, mistakes, how to fail better, uh, Generation Africa really build up on experiences, build up on mistakes made in the beginning. Generation Africa is a new project in collaboration uh, with uh, German partners, funding partners to finance 12 to 15, no? 20. 12 to 20 project, documentary projects by African filmmakers on the topic of migration in, within Africa. Usually we only talk about people coming all the way, for instance, to European countries. But this project really invites filmmakers with workshops to tell the story and it remains within the African continent. Now, uh, we had a pre-chat, Tiny and I, and Tiny said, well, the most interesting thing was to look at what kind of projects were submitted, and I would like you to share uh, with us your overall impression when you were trying to set up a new model of collaboration and you were receiving the projects. What were your impressions, where do we stand and, and how far does this uh, reflect maybe also if I'm allowed to generalize. Of course the situation is different if we are talking about Ghana or Kenya or South Africa or Congo. We all admit and know that it's different. But since it's a pan-African project with a focus region, uh, would you be able to share your thoughts when you were looking at the submissions? Sure. Um, uh, but first, I'd like to just start by contextualizing that STEPS is a non-profit media company based in South Africa that started about 18 years ago. Uh, 18 years? And uh, the first project that was done was Steps to the Future, which was also a collection of films uh, looking at changing the narrative around the way people talk and viewed HIV and living with HIV in Southern Africa. So the filmmakers that were making films then were from just that part of the continent. After that, the next project that was done was uh, Why Democracy, which was a global project, which I'm sure a lot of you know the films from there, an Oscar-winning film from there, which was Taxi to the Dark Side. So there we're working with filmmakers from around the world. Then the next project of that was Why Poverty, which was also a global project looking at the systemic causes and underlying causes of poverty. So what's new about this initiative is that we are making the colossal attempt at um, looking at this one specific theme um, across 54 countries that have different histories, different languages, and um, different contexts in terms of film production in those places. So that is a huge undertaking to make, and um, there have been lots of learnings, and um, we're also learning, like I said, building up from lessons learned before. So when I started in September, we the first thing to do was to send out calls for submissions and you know, connect with um, networks that are existing throughout the continent in order to put out this call in English and French, because our intention was to do the program in both languages in order to bridge the biggest divide. There's also Lucifer Africa and other languages, you know? Um, and when submissions came in, some were from fiction filmmakers who are kind of toying with the idea of making a creative documentary, but quite a lot, um, were from filmmakers who, from their CV and their profile, you can tell that they've made some factual, as it were, uh, real life films, but for clients. And the clients are usually UNESCO, the United Nations, and NPOs whose objective is to intervene in the lives of Africans um, and uh, to create what is like a behavioral change. 
So the, 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 the way that the filmmakers frame very important subject is how can we how can we make these communities think about this thing better? How it's about that. And there is not much space that filmmakers have to think about this as their own stories and to think about this as a, their own stories that they're making for their communities, for their audiences, and presenting them in a way that are not judgmental, in ways that are not uh, pedagogic, like let's teach you how to hygiene or, you know, like health promotion, like that kind of thing. So it was um, very interesting, but also the challenge of that is to then look deeper into what a filmmaker has done before, into what they're trying to do, and see how you can create space for them to actually do that. Firstly, to send them the memo that this is an initiative that is about creating creative documentaries. So be creative, like this is, let's, let's all go together and see what that's about. So that was the experience. Um, and also then after watching it, you start to reflect on actually in the first place, there aren't a lot of creative documentaries that are being made on the continent because there aren't a lot of resources that are allocated for making creative documentaries. Financiers don't see African audiences as viable audiences for these films, and therefore they don't see a need to position films in order to entertain and in order to challenge and speak in a kind of visual and aesthetic language of Africans. And that's important for documentary, for documentaries to have real impact instead of being tools that people are gathered in tents to watch because the United Nation is here and maybe they, they might be freebies after. You you know, that kind of dynamic. So we're looking forward to making good films. Thank you very much, uh, Tiny. I think this is a very nice way of opening up. And as I said before, uh, please interact if you have something to say. But this is exactly what you, you've been saying and also what is reflected on what Neos said about her film and partly uh, true also to your first reaction in presenting your commentaries. I think we are a little bit stuck into this side things, this is the expectation of, and the other side things, or we have to reflect on the pre-existing uh, expectations. So this is not an unprepared panel. I sent all of them questions <laughs> before. So I hope they come up with the answers I don't know, but I hope uh, you have some interesting experiences to share on, you know, where could you put the finger down on this happened then and I reacted rightly so with getting out of this trap or I found it very difficult to get out of this circle of expectations and how to match them. Oh. Okay, me? Oh, yeah, okay. Okay. Should I start? Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know, it's, uh, how does one attack that? Um, I think also just hearing what you're saying about UNESCO and your experience about what the applications, what types of films they were, the types of experiences they've had, I can sort of, I think we can all relate to that. Um, my issue is that it's less on who is making films and what about, and it's more about acknowledging what I like to call the machinery of it, that we are all not here doing the same things. We're here, we're very much, constrained by a system that operates in the same way, be it in Germany, be it in South Africa, be it in Namibia, where I'm from. And, you know, the, the, the machinery is set there to extract a product. Mm -hmm. And that product could be anything. It could be a film, but it could also be uh, diamonds. It could also be people. It could also be ideas. And uh, unfortunately, there just is not, there are just not enough resources, at least in my experience. There are not enough resources, there are not enough institutions or systems available on hand that have the same interests, that have the interest of uh, allowing artists, allowing filmmakers to create, empowering them, allowing them the space to develop their ideas, which is so important and so integral, and then supporting them with production funds. So what we have is, and I can relate to that, where I had to do advertising, I had to do, or you're at the mercy of making another AIDS film or whatever it might be, and you're less in, in a position of power where you can, first of all, develop your own voice. Because there's also the myth that you can do it all, that you can be the filmmaker and you can, and as a filmmaker you can do ads, commercials, art films, work your way up, do the Wakanda thing. It's, life is also really short, right? But I think importantly, when you're spending so much of your time 
trying to make sure that you're developing films that a European film fund will get, or so much time developing a proposal to get the UNESCO money, you're not being, in, quote unquote, an artist, right? You're not, you're, what is that artist spirit, that, that, that sort of, that uh, curiosity, that, uh, that, that in terms of practice and experimenting, you're not in a position to do that because you're consumed by that. You're in the ad world, which has a different rhythm, which requires a different face and mask, right? Which requires a different way of being and working. So I think that for me is, is the hardest challenge. Just to first acknowledge that it's less, we're all sort of trapped by that in a way. It's less the sort of, uh, sort of boring Europe versus Africa, West versus Africa thing. It's less just being honest about the machinery that we all work under. And there are spaces and people that are trying to free that up. And there are people that are obviously trying to do the opposite and trying to make a product and trying to make money. Um, okay, I? I'm, I'm uh, just uh, one second. I'm, I'm stepping in here and I'm provoking you. Uh -oh. uh -huh. uh, and that is your film got invited because it's not such a, I mean, it's a product as it's a film with the DCP mm -hmm. and subtitles and no, no, no. But it's a film that we invited because we wanted it. We didn't want to have the, you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, preset product uh, that is maybe sellable to a TV station. Mm. This is also true for Jeremiah's film. It's very much a film out of the box that might be difficult to sell to TV, maybe you're lucky and you will, Niosh as well. So we, and I'm now speaking in behalf of the programming co uh, colleagues of mine, mm. including myself, this is exactly what you're looking for mm -hmm. when we are doing, putting together our program. So where is it that we step in and change this circle? Because most certainly what you want to do is what we want to show as the festival, mm -hmm. I think. There, there are also the, I mean, the economical structure is what basically, I think there's a gap between what we want to do. Mm -hmm. I think we all have very different perspectives and we have, as filmmakers we have found like our boys and things we want to talk about. And then there are festivals and also the audience, I think, mm -hmm. that really appreciate this kind of mm -hmm. stories. There's a gap in between, which is not a small gap, which is getting the funding. Okay. And from my experience, uh, it was extremely difficult to finance a film that was set in Africa. Yet, if most of the crew was Spanish and French. I mean, I spent five years, uh, because, and I understood that this relationship, North, South, was not interesting at all for the institutions, for the film institutions in my country, in France, and in general. So this is extremely sad to discover, uh, as a filmmaker, that if you want to say something about not only the world, and, but your relation as, as Spanish, for instance, with other countries that are, are not like yours, it's extremely difficult, because we all think about European audience, Spanish audience, like really close thing. Uh, luckily, there are festivals that are really open up for this kind of uh, initiatives, but this is something that arrives in the end, so it means there are plenty of projects that will never get to that point. Sorry, Tiny, I was cutting you off. You were no, no, no. Uh, yo, there's so much going on. The first thing, I think it's really important to to have this conversation and proceed from an understanding and acceptance mm. and a celebration of the fact that film is a collaborative medium. Mm. It is impossible, like on set, to have one person make an entire film. And the thing that I really liked about your film is that it was so collaborative. Like everyone who was involved felt like they were like very much a part of it. Everyone from what you can see in the film has a voice in the film, as crew, as cast and so on, and that's important. But also in thinking about financing films, I think it's okay that big international films require co-productions, right? And, and I don't think it's, so much just an intervention from the side of European festivals or international festivals. It's us filmmakers and the filmmaking community on the continent who have to be strident 
about the fact that we enter into partnerships with a view of giving voice to not just African filmmakers who make up part of a kind of elite in our societies anyway, but also giving voice to our to our communities as filmmakers. So primarily that relationship starts with you, that, that responsibility starts with you, and then you go about forging relationships with partners from everywhere in the world as an equal partner, right? But also as the creative lead. Because if the film is being made in your country, you're the one that knows not just the language, but also the storytelling language of your people, but also you're the one that knows the truth that needs to be conveyed in that particular story that you're telling. And, um, you know, these kind of conversations, these kind of panels have been going on, like I've been following these kind of conversations for the past 10 years. And, um, and I think that it's, it's, it's high time that as filmmakers and content producers from the continent, we have a lot more um, and exercise a lot more of our agency as partners in the making of films from our part of the world. Well, me too. I think we shared about this 15 years or more on panels like this. And I don't know, I'm a I'm little bit overstepping possibly by saying this, but my observation is that uh, looking at why we get stuck is because sometimes this kind of panels lack like honesty. And the honesty consists, in my view, it's a very personal view, but I think uh, the uh, the honesty is lacking because there is a lot of fear involved by those people, including the decision-making uh, people, including the funders. And that is from the European side. Uh, if we uh, look at what's going on of being critical also about films that maybe we don't like. Uh, and it's a different way of talking about an African film I don't like than it is about a Finnish film or a Polish film. Because there's always this element, and I'm speaking as a programmer who's sat in those jury meetings, in those decision-making rounds a lot. I think there is this kind of fear of being accused a racist. And on the other hand, I think there is also a dynamic that comes from the African side. Now, this is my question to all of you, and this is also a pre-asked question where I don't know the answer. If you would like to share some experiences where you were faced with racism as filmmakers, as producers, as people in the industry, where you felt shit, uh, I, I'm not getting out of this because this is a kind of racism in a maybe pseudo, very progressive environment where uh, you know we don't know how to address these issues or how, what is your view on that? You know, for me, I don't know if it's a racism is the right word um, to describe it, but more some sort of prejudice in a way um, that uh, the common thing has always been about um, the the acceptance of mediocre standard by Europeans when it comes to mm -hmm. African cinema or African cinemas. Mm -hmm. I've had this so many times where they said, it's pretty good for African film. Mm -hmm. This is very common. Mm -hmm. and, um, and also, the expectations that you have as a creator or as an artist to do, uh, make something colors, make something vibrant, uh, have something African to it, but of course without saying it directly. It's sort of an expectation that you have as a creator, as an artist, to have something that is sort of, I don't know, uh, what do they call it nowadays? Um, uh, so someone says something like... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's always like have to have an urge, African urge to it. So for me personally, I feel like it's a, maybe this profiling or the stereotyping that I go through as far as the Europe and as far as being, uh, being an artist and coming from uh, in Lesotho in Africa, mm -hmm. it's sort of being pigeonholed into making an African film that feel and look like African film. Okay, and what, can you give us an example on when this exactly happened in the pre-production or in the development of Mother I'm Suffocating? You know, Mother, I'm suffocating is a bit different because it's not a necessarily aesthetically romantic as an African film because the style is sort of so Soviet avant-garde. It's like all over the place. It's totally different. 
So I guess that's why even people will say this is so cool to African film. Because the style is totally different from what people have seen before. So it wasn't necessarily, um, but I think that also what was interesting, I think people were, it's always so interesting to be pigeonholed as well, to address the African issues about war, like reproducing the same stories about war, about hunger, about poverty, and about dance, about drums. So I feel like f for me, in a way, I could see how somehow it can relate to European audience and they could even push a filmmaker to do films like that that shows the hardcore reality, which is very important as well to show the hardcore reality and not to sugarcoat everything. Uh, to really be able to be defined as yourself as an artist and talk about the fucked upness, not necessarily saying it's all cool, it's all nice. Of course, it's good to go there, but if you as an artist wants to go there, not because you're pigeonholed or you expect it, to actually go certain routes or because that's what the festival world is expecting, you know. Niels, would you be able to, to give us a little bit more insight when you said it took you five long years uh, to finance this film, to make this film? Um, were you told this, what you t tell us, like as bottom line of your experience that people in Europe in the commissioning, editing chairs. Were you told directly, oh, we have no interest in African topics, or which was the way of how, you know, you were told? Uh... You, you just feel it. It's not uh, something that you, that you say, see directly. Like, for instance, well, if you are going to shoot the whole film in Africa, it means you're going to spend all the Spanish money in Africa, and I said, well, what's the problem? But that's a problem for the, for the industry, you know. Mm. So there were ways to say that. There was also this perspective. Um, of course, we do not like to look at our responsibilities and our past. I mean, Spain has no very direct link to Senegal which that was good, because for, with France it was much more difficult to deal with this issue. Uh, but anyway, we cannot deny that we are a colonialist country and we have still lots of pressure because of this. And I mean, many of the Catalan rich families like, made like, their big, big money with slavery. And nobody knows. Nobody knows because nobody wants to know. And then it's also not comfortable to talk about how do we relate as Europeans with a colonial past to the South, even if we do not have very close historical relationship. And what people tended to think is that, okay, we are gonna criticize as the Europeans that are uh, like organizing all this touristic system in there. And I said, that's right, but it's not only that, because all the system it has been built by Senegalese people and European people at the same time. So the only way of like, getting into su the subject was to make clear that none of the characters of the film are either good or bad, because it's impossible to do it that way, because that's not how it works. We all do our best, and we do all have in our DNA our past, so then with personal relationships, we are still shaped by this, uh, by the place we have in this macroeconomical geographical structure. Mm. And uh, that's basically the subject of the film, I, I must say. But I have been seeing all that during the whole process, mm. <laughs> how all this structure uh, finally made possible in a very, strange way in the film. Well, if I may speak in behalf of the Berlin Film Festival, we try very, very hard. Uh, I mean, you all bring in individual stories that, ha I mean, all of you could tell like for three hours how you were working, how your individual projects were made. Um, but what I would like you to do, Tani, you have to leave now. 
Oh, okay. So then maybe you speak first. But what I, what I want to assure you is that we, as a festival, we try to tackle these problems. I don't think there is one big solution. It's not, absolutely. It's like little, little things. And uh, for instance, Mrs. Fellner and the um, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, when they started to say, well, we understand what World Cinema Fund is doing, we give you some extra budget to finance African films. Suddenly we had more room to move and these films are made now. So this is one of the elements. And we are very grateful for this, by the way. Uh, so, but it's, it's one way is finances, but it's also changing the system that your film talks about. So I want to invite you to give us as a festival, or maybe there are commissioning editors here, concrete ideas, like if, if this is uh, the pre-Christmas wish list, Uh, or something that you feel that would really help me to take the next step. What would that be? And maybe Tiny starts because she has only five minutes left. Thank you, Dorothy. Um, so just before I talk about my wishes, um, mm -hmm. so in the project that we're working on right now, Generation mm -hmm. Africa, we are sitting with 35 projects, uh, which we've given a grant to do development, research, shoot some visual material, write a treatment, get on the phone with us and have an existential crisis from time to time. And, <laughs> and um, we, these are all compelling stories that we wish we had the resources to produce. But outside of just putting money in films, right, um, if you, there's a lot of, countries and different parts of the continent, because we're talking about 54 countries, where there's a lot of uh, need for um, infrastructure, like training and skills development, but also the ability for people to move about freely in the continent, right? So, which is ironic because our project is about migration within the continent and outside of the continent. Most of migration in Africa happens within the continent. And a wish list would be a way to um, to one, make mobility within Africa easier. Okay, um, but that goes to an airline. No, I'm talking about visa, okay. the ability to cross okay. borders, yeah. um, and that's really essential for being able to collaborate and make films, mm. you know? And a lot of the filmmakers that we're working with want to do this, but also tellingly, a lot of the characters in our stories mm. are people who are moving within the continent and finding new opportunities, mm. Um, finding political solidarities in order to solve the problems in their countries that make it impossible for them to move. Anyway, um, I had to give, this is the most topmost concern in my mind right now, um, and I know that you wanted something very concrete and specific. And when I was thinking about this, because we had a pre-chat about this, one of the things that I was thinking is that we are all in the process of building the world, but we also find ourselves in the world that was built by you know, all of our forefathers, our ancestors, and whatever. So um, filmmakers in Togo find themselves within a, a, an ecosystem that they didn't create on their own, and we all have a responsibility to support each other, mm -hmm. and in order for us to actually have good quality stories. Because the status quo right now is only the people who can make films get to make films. We're not expanding this number of people. We're not bringing new people into this fold. We're not giving and taking risks. We're not taking risks and giving new people opportunities to express themselves. So we don't know the, the, the breadth and the scope of film aesthetically that we could have, not just as Africa, but other parts of the world. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank Great you. Suggestions. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I don't know who of you would like to add on this list, which is like, I mean, Christmas, I, I, don't, I hope I'm not sounding naive or, or like that, but I think really it's, um, we are at a very crucial time, uh, and there is a momentum at the moment, which I think we shouldn't lose. So the more concrete the ideas and what we could do, 
I think the visa thing is something that we as Berlin Film Festival, for instance, have limited access to. I'm just looking at Mrs. Fellner to put it on her list. Uh, but I, I think in reality, there isn't much uh, that we could provide. Please, up to you to come up with ideas maybe you want to share with fellow filmmakers, with uh, talents. Here, there, but there is also someone with a brilliant idea. Pumi, you first. I think that works. Just talk. Yeah. Hello. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is weird, but hi. Uh, I think, I think uh, for me, uh, my view is I understand um, what Tiny is saying. And mm. I don't know if I need to prefix this with we're very good friends. Um, but I don't know if necessarily find, finding, finding new filmmakers is um, important. I think we're having enough trouble with the filmmakers who exist, especially on the continent, who are struggling to make a second film, half a film, it's a mess. And sometimes you have this thing where when we talk about development mm -hmm. and uh, the UNESCO's and the UN and this and that, they, they come like a satellite alien ship into a township and they build a soccer stadium. And then all the children congregate around the soccer stadium. And even children that weren't meant to be soccer players because everybody goes to the soccer stadium. Mm -hmm. So I guess I must become a soccer player. But maybe that wasn't even your talent or something that you cared about. You just wanted to hang out with the kids who play soccer. So I think it might be the same in film, that filmmakers, people who want to make films, mm -hmm. will step forward and present themselves as filmmakers. Once they are there, then we must help them. We must help the ones who have put their hand up. This is my view. Because people make films with nothing, right? Nothing. Uh, I'm a musician. To, 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 to become a musician, uh, I, had, I had to find my way. My parents before me, they were in dire situations, in apartheid, in hectic, in hectic times. Their, their families, uh, their brothers and sisters were on drugs. The systems were, were terrible. And some get out and some don't. Unfortunately, this is capitalism. So what I'm, say, what I'm saying is, as long as we're living up the, under, cap, unless we're talking about changing capitalism, then I think if we're living in capitalism, then what we should do is we should, we should assist the people who, who have already started to try and make things happen, who have, who have put their hands up. Mm -hmm. We should create those legends, support those legends, support those heroes, make, make, make their jobs a little bit Okay. Uh, more possible, so that then that will give you more filmmakers, and other, in, in a way that will present uh, other people. So I feel that the funding structures, last thing on this, I feel that the funding structures are quite lazy in a, in a, in a, in a way, because if I'm working in a funding uh, place, I know that I have this amount of money, and I can, th these are the things that I can enact. And when I look at the program of the Berlinale, uh, I can see, oh, there are five South African films there. Uh, I am sitting on a South African funding board. I've never met th these two uh, directors from the fourth film on the Berlinale program. How did they get there without me? I should go find out how they're doing. Mm. What do they need? I don't wait for applications in a website. It's so easy. You, you, sometimes people in funding bodies in, in my country will see a film at Sundance. There's a South African director. Somehow is at Sundance. We don't know how this person got mm. to Sundance. So then what are you doing about it? How are you, how you going to help that, that person make a second film, a third film? What are their dreams? What are their, you know? Yeah. That, that's my feeling. I think it's a very, very valid point. Thank you very much, Pumi. Uh, I don't know. 
there are, you, you've got the mic, which you can throw. I, I think Jeremiah wants to say Jeremiah, something. Jeremiah, you want to say something, and meantime, you pass on the okay. mic to. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I, totally, I, I totally understand what you're saying, but I just feel like maybe exclus exclusivity, in this case, it's a bit tricky because there are young people who don't have access to the information. You're a musician, you're pretty much privileged. You're a very strong musician. And it's very easy for you to access the information, to have even the ability that enable, even to have access that can enable you to be a filmmaker. And if you have like these kids who come in the stadium, some of them they don't know, they've never heard about filmmaking. And, um, and in that way, that's how they have access to information. Because I come from that place where I didn't know, but I knew that I liked film, mm -hmm. but I didn't have someone who have information that I need to make film until later on. And, um, and also, I mean, before I was very um, skeptic with African Hub in Belenali, but now really I understand it as a most, I think one of the best beautiful thing. Um, because at first I thought, ah, the African always in the corner. I don't want to be African in the corner. I want it to be in the main stage. You know, but I started to see the beauty of it because I started to see how filmmakers coming from African continents, how we actually come together and forge relationships. And, as, and at the same time, I started, to see, I started to see young people who at first, a couple of years ago, I saw their films that were, of course, they're still trying their first film. Uh, um, they did it on their own. And, but now they're very good. And this is one of the things that I would like to applaud, actually, Belenali, as far as giving a stage for the people who could not have shown their film in any way. Yeah. Thank you very much. I, I think I, I feel a little urged to just add, Talents by itself started out as an initiative to prevent what is the flip side of what you've just said. So nurture the existing or working filmmakers. Uh, the 16-year-old Jeremiah had, he heard when you were 16 in Lesotho what you just said, you wouldn't have been amused. You see my point. Uh, I think Talents was made to be the program within the festival to open new, uh, the door of, you know, a cultural world that can be very feudal and can be very unjust. So if you don't know you and you don't know Christine Tröström, you might be in trouble. Uh, so I think we always, as an institution, as Berlinale, we try to be very sensitive in doing this and that. For me, it's not a contradiction, but what I got for, from him, uh, from what Pumi had said before, I think it is very important to stop this cannibalistic, oh, we always want to hear the next new voice, like this cannibalistic zombie thing in film festival programming that I'm very well aware of. And what I got from his thing is that it helps a lot to talk among the initiatives that we have in Europe between the festivals in order to get somewhere else and maybe a second or third step ahead instead of only trying to reinvent the wheel with every new initiative. Is that... National fund of da da da, like actual fund. Festivals are, are doing their thing. They mix it up. They mm. develop talent. They develop. Fund people sit in a country where they know there's ten filmmakers. They, yeah. they know there's ten filmmakers in this country. It's mm. not a mystery. Mm. And you know these ten yeah. filmmakers where they live. You could drive yeah. there now and talk to them about yeah. what must we do, what can we do. But but they okay. don't. They wait so, for emails. <clears throat> so, you know. Yeah. So a lot of funds are quite closely related to festivals. So I think that's a way to sneak in your message. Uh, we continue with hopefully good ideas. Yeah, I hope so. <clears throat> uh, I think to, to try and get straight to the point, I would say invest in the youth. Maybe that's the solution, actually. Uh, what I mean by invest in the youth is Maybe the, the best approach is not to be promoting 
more and more meetings like this to speak about the subject, to, uh, to say in, in theories, you know. Last year in Cannes, there was this strike of black actors who was marching. Black is not my job, black is not my job, you know. They were frustrated because they are living in a country where they are not represented enough because the, the people who write the stories don't know them enough, don't master their culture, don't master their personality and some many dimension of who they are. And it is normal. I am a script writer. I, most of the stories I write don't have white people and it is perfectly normal, you know? But the more I travel, the more I meet people, and the more I become inclusive, you know, the more white people or white stories or white narrative have their place in my stories. So what I mean by invest in use is instead of creating hubs here, maybe to collect talents from here and to send them in residency in Africa, in Asia, in, I don't know, somewhere else, so they can live and experience the culture. Because me, to be honest, I am not interested into uh, saying black people have to tell their own stories. I am to promote that a good story has to be told by whoever it is. You know? It means if, if today, for example, I find someone here who is very interested into traveling, who have never been in Senegal, you know, and I'm like, hey, you know what? I am in a program, I am in an association, and we have like two million euros every year to make movies, but you know what? We're not even using half of this money. What about you come in Senegal and, and, and we write, and write a movie there? And the guy comes, you know, and we think about the story. What I'm looking for is him bringing his approach, me telling him about my myth, about my legend, about those things, and we build the story together. Or at the worst case, he comes, I put him in touch with people, he documents, he finds something, and then he has people around him, local people, who can advise him wisely and honestly and genuinely about how to build this project the best way possible. It doesn't matter if he's white, it doesn't matter if he's blue. What matters is that this guy wants to really tell a nice story about what he experienced and he has to say it. And if it needs to be made in Europe or somewhere else, it has to be done anyway. So maybe send the, I don't know, create more residences for the young people here to discover the world outside mm. instead of growing up, having some prejudice around what's going outside. It's like the movies in, uh, that news made. They would not come into some touristic environment, you know, to see just a little bit of the culture, come back and say, okay, now I can write a yeah. story about it. You know. uh, one quick reaction to that. I like the idea a lot. What I think is underestimated very often is how much you can achieve if you really form a little structure. So a lot of funding that comes from this part of the world into mm -hmm. African initiatives, uh, you know, there, is, there are quite a lot of opportunities, but the initiative sometimes, when you form a structure, a lot of this funding can't go to an individual project, an individual film by nature. And I think there is some reason for it which is not anti-art and, uh, you know, it makes sense. But once these little structures are formed, a lot is possible, so I hope you will use your time here in Berlin to create this little structure and hopefully something, something will come out. Peri, you wanted to say something? To... Okay, so, please. Oh, our. Um, hello, guys, hey, hello. everyone here. <laughs> um, uh, so just to, to, to kind of add to uh, the solution uh, question that you asked uh, about solutions, I think a lot of the time when we are having these conversations about, you know, how to save Africa, what do, how do we move forward for the industry, all of these solutions are valid. There's nothing wrong with having an existing um, filmmaker from South Africa having you know, access to funding, and there's also nothing wrong with having up and coming film. We can have all of these existing at the same time. It, it doesn't necessarily mean we have to have one by one, you know. Um, 
so, so, so that, that for me is a, a big one. And um, I think more importantly, access, you know. To what? All, access to um, information, access to these events, you know, um, access to people who, who are expert. Like for me, I don't know how people back home, I'm from a small town in Port Elizabeth, they are amazing, potentially good storytellers, but how do they get access to these spaces? And there's a huge gap. Through you? Well, through me, but I'm only one person. Yeah, but you form a little circle and then you do a little film scene in Port Elizabeth. But that's a huge responsibility yes. just for me. Ha, ha. <laughs> yes, you have this that responsibility. Huge... I think wow. all of us have this responsibility. Really? But some of us have it more than others. You know, I mean, for the fact that I'm still young and developing and the better. trying to grow. Because no, other grow than that, that are old white men. You're a young black woman with all your potential. So yes, I think it's your responsibility I, as much as it is mine <laughs> and his and everyone's. We, I, I, I'm very grateful for what you said, that the more initiatives we have, the more likely it is that you find Uh, someone maybe sitting in front of you uh, who says, oh, this is lovely to have like a new scene in Port Elizabeth. And is this my phone? No. no. Okay. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, but seriously, I'm, I'm, I'm trying not to be like too polemic. But I think really it counts on you, on the individual. You say you have all these storytellers. Do something in Port Elizabeth. I'm a re well, um, okay. Hold on. Before we, before we, before we, before we clap, you know, because I think it's a, a very idealistic answer, and it's, 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 no, not at all, because I am helping people back home. Great. But it's, but the help that I'm giving, it's not enough to make up for the years and years and years and years of being behind. There's something bigger that we need, and m just having one person have that responsibility for a whole province. No, you can't. No, no but <laughs> maybe, maybe um, um, we didn't express it the right way. Um, if you take the first step, you pick up the responsibility, and then you share the responsibility with others, you can help them to grow into taking their role in this responsibility. So make it a collective one, but you have to take the first step because you're the smartest one. You have to contact to us or to Berlin talents but what I'm saying it's not enough That's no I see what you mean I see what you mean but when we look at the world at, at what we described you know uh, we all have reasons to say oh god everything is so difficult and blah, blah, blah. if we don't take the initiative and I think Uh, sorry for, for generalizing, but I think, uh, you know, you as African filmmakers, African-based filmmakers or with an African background, you have the momentum of the moment that it is a very, very crucial moment. I'm sure within the next two, three, four, five years, the problems that Noish has faced over the past five years is because of the laziness of what you've described. I'm sure, and when we look at demographics, at the world, at capitalism, and what all is going to happen, this will drastically change. So people like you in Port Elizabeth better get ready now, form something. So you have, on the one hand, a, a larger responsibility, and I'm sorry to say, I think a little bit more work than when you work from out of France, but you also have a lot of chances. And that is you as a person. And if we don't take this chance, this capitalist, uh, you know, globalization world is just rolling over us and, you know, uh, suddenly we are dead and then that was it. It's now. My view. Sorry, uh, I'm overstepping here a little bit as a moderator. But there are more people who have the microphone. Please. Yes, hi. Um, <clears throat> I'm an African-American uh, descendant of African slaves, so as an American, I won't take up too much space, but as an African, I feel that I have a place in this conversation. First, I have to respond to what I just heard because it's so hard to hear to sit in Europe and, and you know, countries that 
have had so much help from the resources and labor of Africa to tell us, you know, it's our responsibility. That's just hard to hear. But what I wanted to ask is, you know, going back to your earlier point about honesty, I thought that was a fantastic point um, on panels and on juries. What is the space between being, you know, being afraid of being called racist and acknowledging that there is a grammar and a language to black life and cinema and African cinema, same for African American cinema, that needs to be learned. There needs to be criticism, writing about it, education about it. Audiences need to be educated about how to read our films because they see them and they don't know what they're looking at. When I play my film in a room full of black people, people are laughing when they're supposed to laugh. They're silent when they're supposed to be quiet. When I play it in a room full of white people, they're just silent and stunned and all they've seen is the tragedy. And so I think that there's cultural work to be done in the conversations around our films that can take it out of the place of, am I racist or do I like it? And take it to a place of, do I have the intellectual tools to understand what I'm seeing? Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, can I just say something to that? I think what you, your response was so important that I think because we're also we're ignoring questions of power as if we all have the same access to resources, have the same access to networks, etc. And we're not ignoring the fact that, you know, there's a quote in our film, in Film Festival film, there's a moment where we hear Fanon, our, our protagonist, the filmmaker at the festival, we hear her inner thoughts, and she said something about, um, uh, I know I'm fluent in you, and you know nothing about me. You know, and this is really what we contest, contest with. So even who we are, we talk about back home on the continent, our structures are not our own. This is a system that's been applied where we are. It's not a question of just getting on with it and accessing and doing the thing. Um, you know, you can spend an entire time, an entire lifetime living in Africa and never learn an African language if you're European and be in positions of power, have success, have a job. Imagine, you know, the opposite. You can't operate in that way. So we're not working all from a space where we are, uh, there's a consistency in terms of sensitivity, in terms of consideration, in terms of education and awareness. We have to know about you to the point where we become more American than American, more German than the Germans. But you don't need to know about us and where we meet is not an even playing field. However, even if our intentions are honorable, even if we're trying to do the right thing, because I think we are clearly all sitting here with the same considerations, the same cons similar concern. Um, but again, it's just to acknowledge that, and I think we need more honesty, because you talk about the fear that exists, which is a real thing, and thank you for being open about that, but for me, there's no fear, ever, because we work from such a space of, uh, we have nothing to lose, we are having to ascend to fight for access into, you know, so you start from such a position of disempowerment, and then what Pumi was saying, importantly, I think, which uh, something that I, I felt might have gotten lost there, just that our own funds or our own systems at home are not set up necessarily to serve us, but to, you know, to tick boxes sometimes. But even when they're well intended, it's a question of finding, um, of, of following a, a Western model, so to speak. So you're not, uh, you, the, the human being gets lost in all that, the, the considering the human being. So if anything, in terms of solutions, it's, let's be a bit more honest. Um, about where we all operate from, you know, and we're all complicit in certain ways, I think, and yeah, anyway. Yeah. Thank you, Perivi. This was a very nice way of ending where we started out. I think it would have been naive to think that after 90 minutes we would have found a solution to a problem that goes back in decades. But I hope uh, that this session at least motivated some of you to maybe address each other or our guest panelists. And I can say in behalf of Berlinale, we are always open when you have new ideas, specifically from Port Elizabeth, uh, what you want to do. Maybe we can't give you like the insight, but we might connect you to another person in case you don't find he or she here as the next step that you need to take. And I hope in that sense, uh, this session was inspiring, if only for the next little step to take. I wish you a very pleasant talents afternoon and Berlinale evening. Thank you very much, specifically to our panelists. Thanks. <laughs>